staff, where do they go? Some go off to school, some go off to work, but they miss you so. So we made some videos to show you about who knows. It's that Arrowhead Variety Show. The production caliber. The commitment. The dedication to creating your piece for the variety show each week is what Tony decided to focus on this specific week in episode four. So, Tony Award number four goes to Peter Thabit. Thank you, Tony, for constantly voting on our best performances. And thank you, everybody. Let's see what episode five has in store for us. Hey, what is up, Arrowhead? Okay, so a little bit longer video here about the update on our, I think they're called vegetables. First off, for our avocado salad, pig bacon. Pretty exciting stuff. So, one of the toothpicks fell off and it opened up insight into the middle. So, I'm gonna zoom in. I don't know if my camera's gonna focus on it. So, I'm overlapping a photo of it now, but you can kind of see in the middle, there are what looks like three or four, maybe five, I'm gonna call them sprouts in the very middle of the avocado. So that's showing pretty solid growth sign. I think um, I'm optimistic about pig bacon. I think we're going to have a miniature avocado soon, which would be dope. All right, and then we're coming over to Herbert. Now you may notice, Brian, why is Herbert upside down? Well, I'll tell you, I have a friend who is majoring in what he calls trees. Um, and while he is majoring in trees, he knows a thing or two about vegetables and plants as well. And he said, Ryan, potatoes have these things called eyes. I was like, great, I already drew them on. Perfect. He was like, now, eyes are these little indents in potatoes, which they grow out of. They, that's where they're gonna spurt out of. And he said, you cut off all the eyes on the bottom of the potato, um, which is why it's not growing, but you need to cut you need to keep the eyes on the top and put them in upside down and the eyes on the top will grow so basically we're starting over he's gonna be upside down don't worry his mouth is still above the water so he can breathe um but yeah i also took the toothpick off of pig bacon and shoved it in his head for a hat maybe i'll fashion him a hat next week i don't know anyways starting over with Herbert, pig bacon's got some nice progress, so uh, this this could be a saved experiment. All right, see you guys next week. Hi guys, I am here with my nieces, Mackenzie and Savannah, and during this time I've not worn makeup, I've not done my hair, so today they are going to help me do my makeup and my hair, and I can't wait to see what it comes out like. So keep watching and let's see. Thanks for watching. I got my makeup done and my hair done, and I am now dressed as a unicorn. Leave your reviews in the comments, and we'll see you later. Bye. So I was trying to come up with other ideas, like to show you guys what I've been doing. I was like, hmm, what's something I really like? Well, I was thinking, I was like, I really love Disney. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank every uh, Disney and Pixar movie into some separate tiers. Uh, we have S tier, which is the best of the best. A tier, still really good, really great. B tier is good. C tier is like meh. D tier is like bleh. And the ones I haven't seen, I really can't rank too much. All right, these are going to be rapid fire. Just quick, quick, quick. Just see what we got. Finding Dory, saw it at Arrowhead. Thought it was all right. Ellen's in it. B. 
Ratatouille, the rat makes pasta. C. Up. Uh, really good movie. First five minutes will make you cry. A. Uh, Alice in the Wonderland. Uh, the Chesser Cat Gave Me Nightmares. C. Lady the Tramp. More spaghetti. Uh, C. Toy Story. Really good, but not great. A. Jungle Book. Uh, Bare Necessities. B. Uh, Aristocats. Haven't seen. Lilo and Stitch. Family's favorite movie. S. Monsters U. Terrible. D. Uh, Second Incredibles. Eh. B. Inside Out. Pretty Cute. Bing Bong. Yeah. A. Bolt. Generic. Bad. D. Princess and the Frog. Got some good songs. B. Sleeping Beauty. Who cares? D. 101 Dalmatians. Cruella de Vil. Uh, just for that one song. B. Toy Story 4. Haven't seen. I'm sorry. Uh, Finding Nemo. Really good. Better than Finding Dory. A. Tangled. Underrated movie. Go watch it. A. Frozen 2. Uh, A tier. Uh, where's the other Frozen? Uh, we'll get to it. Oh, there it is. Also A tier. Uh, Little Mermaid. Uh, middle School. I was in the stage crew production. Uh, S tier. Cars. A lot of car anatomy questions that don't get answered, and it makes me scared. C. Toy Story 3. Best Toy Story movie. S. Tarzan. Uh, eh. B. Brave. The Mom is a Bear. C. Beauty and the Beast. Best classic Disney movie. S. Monsters Univer- Not University. University's bad. Ink is really good. S. Hercules. Best overall soundtrack of any Disney movie. S. Uh, I haven't seen. Bambi. C. Pinocchio. Sucks. D. Snow White. The dwarves are the only thing that's good. B. Atlantis is not real. Dumbo. It's cute. Normal. First Incredibles. Better than Incredibles 2. Go up a tier. A. Pocahontas. Real life story. Color of the Wind. B. Cinderella. Boring. D. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Bad-ish. C. Uh, the second one. Better. B. I think the second one's better. Hunchback of Notre Dame. Pretty good. Very good. Kind of dark. A. Mulan. Really good. S tier. Moana. Saw that at Arrowhead. Seen it probably ten times overall now. Eh, A tier. Aladdin. My personal favorite Disney movie. S tier. Uh, Emperor's New Groove. He pulls a lever. C. Zootopia. Shakira. B. Lion King. Really, really good. S tier. Fox and the Hound. Makes me cry. B tier. Big Hero 6. Scooby-Doo. Except instead of a talking dog, it's a marshmallow man. B. Uh, Peter Pan. Bad. D tier. Toy Story 2. Just as good as Toy Story 1. Not as good as Toy Story 3. Haven't seen this. Coco. Saw it Arrowhead. Really good songs. Really good story. A tier. Uh, there you have it. If you think you can make a better list, go ahead and try. But I think this is pretty definitive. So after you guys have seen my list, here's each movie in its separate tier so you guys can get a clearer picture of what I thought. I'm sure you guys agreed with me in some areas, disagreed with me with others. So go ahead and make your own. You can find it online. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys make with your list, but uh, overall, I think mine can't be beat. Hello, everyone. So I'm here today because I need to come clean about something, actually. Um, I have this hidden part of myself that I need you guys to promise you're not going to tell anybody about because it's a pretty big deal. But I actually have magical powers. I haven't told anyone. It's a big hidden part about myself. But I feel like you guys should know because I made a big mistake. I think the power got to my head and I need to come clean about it. So I'm going to need your guys' help from this mistake that I made. But first of all, I feel like I should explain how all of this started, right? So one day last summer, I was walking around camp and I found this really cool jar. And I thought it was normal at first, but Camp Arrowhead's the most magic place on earth, so it had to be special. When I picked it up, I realized that its magic powers were transferring to me. And all of a sudden, the jar started levitating, so I knew that this jar had given me magic powers. So, naturally, I had to figure out what else I could do with these cool powers. So as it turns out, I could find money from behind anybody's ear. That was the first trick. Then I realized I could make Crocs levity. And I could move pencils with my mind. Too much power. So this all brings us to today, where stuff starts to get a little crazy. I got a little bit too arrogant about my secret powers. And about two months ago, I was telling my good friend Alex Campbell about uh, my secret powers and he was like haha I bet you can't do a really big trick and I was like oh yes I can and he said well I dare you to make all the toilet paper in the world disappear 
like nobody can find it anywhere, they can't buy it anywhere. And I was like, okay, deal, I can do that. And it turns out I actually could do that. And now all the toilet paper is gone and it's my fault. Well, it's actually Alex's fault, but. So I wanted to come clean to you guys about that. And please keep this a secret. Hey guys, Future Ryan here. Um, Future Ryan because I just got done shooting my video and I realized it was like 12 minutes long, way too long. Um, so I thought I'd cut out all the boring stuff, summarize it right here, and then we can go back to past Ryan for the fun and exciting part. Anyways, today I was doing a Mad Lib, but I've gotten way too good at Mad Libs during the quarantine that I use now a random word generator on my laptop. And then I fill in Mad Lib with random words generated from my computer. I promise it's completely random. If you guys don't believe me, hit me up. I'll send you a video proving that it's random. Anyways, we need a relative, so I chose mom. Name, randomly chose Alex. Adjectives, we have voiceless, sparkling, corn, which I didn't know was an adjective, I thought that was a food. Magenta, and mammoth. For verbs, we have bother, enter, expose, weight, and range. For a body part, we have head. And for noun, I had studio and candidate. Anyways, let's go to past Ryan and fill out the Mad Lib. This Mad Lib is called A Letter from Camp. That's why I thought it was, it was gonna be, you know, kind of funny, it's relevant. Anyways, let's get started. Dear Mom, I am having a um, voiceless time at camp. The counselors are sparkling And the food is corn. <laughs> that worked out really well. <laughs> All we serve at around that is straight corn. <laughs> All right, um, I met Alex. And we became uh, magenta friends. Alex is a very magenta friend. Um, unfortunately, Alex is mammoth. When he wears like 50 shirts or something. He is so mammoth and he, um, wait, hold on. And he bothered, okay, he bothered He bothered my head. This one's a body part. So we couldn't go, here's my next verb, entering. Entering like everybody else. Dang Alex, why you gotta be so mammoth? Now we can't go entering. Um, I need more studio. and a candidate. And a candidate sharpener? That sounds interesting. I don't know what a candidate sharpener is. Anyways, I need more studio and a candidate sharpener, so please, another verb, expose. Oh, back-to-back -back verb, expose weight. More when you range back. Yours truly, Camper Ryan. All right. At the end of my videos, my Mad Lib. Sorry, I like to rate it. Um, I'm gonna give this one. This one was pretty solid. Not gonna lie. Aside from this, this last kind of thing, I don't know what a candidate sharpener is. I don't know how you expose a weight and when you range back. I don't know what that is. That kind of knocks it down. But uh, this right here has kind of been the saving grace. I, I promise you I did this random. You guys saw random generators. I don't know how that happened, but that's cool. Um, I'm gonna give this one, this is a solid seven and a half to eight. You know, I'm a little sad, sad that Alex bothered my head so we couldn't go entering, but solid. I'm gonna give it an eight. Oh, we'll give it an eight. Hey, hey, hey. It's time to talk about hydration. I know, 
All summer long, the staff are constantly telling you to stay hydrated and to keep drinking water. It's not gonna stop there. Just because it's not summer doesn't mean that we don't want you to be hydrated. You need to be hydrated all the time. So we're gonna show you five simple ways to make sure that you're staying hydrated in the quarantine. Rule number one. You need to find out how many ounces that you should be drinking daily. In order to do that, you might need to find a grown-up or ask somebody who you live with to help you. But one thing that they say is everybody should be drinking at least a gallon of water. Next up is step number two. Step number two, find a favorite water bottle or just a drinking vessel. I have one for me and one for my mom. Her favorite color is green. Step number three, how many ounces is your favorite drinking vessel? Once you figure that out, you'll figure out how many times you have to refill this and drink it in order to hit your main goal of ounces for the day. So for me, this one water bottle, I have to refill four times. Step four, get elastics. However many elastics you need to refill your water bottle. So for me, it's four. One, two, three, four. And every time you drink a full water bottle, you unscrew the tap cap to make sure to refill it with water, and you take off one of these handy dandy elastics, and you hook it right on here to show you've drank one, and you have three left. Guys, we can barely remember what day of the week it is. How am I gonna remember how many times I've filled up my water bottle? So hopefully you have elastics that can help you. Step five this is the easiest one. Drink up. Make sure that you're drinking as many ounces as you're supposed to be each day and that you stay hydrated. We'll see you all super soon. And thank you so much for making sure that you're constantly drinking enough water throughout the day. See you soon. Hello, Camp Arrowhead. It's me. Adam's great aunt Edna. Today, I wanted to rate and review all of my apples that I gave to Adam. What do you think? Think it'll be fun. All right, let's join me, all right? All right. So I'm gonna put them all out here, okay? And then I'm gonna sort them. Well, this one feels pretty real. Oh, it's not real. It's smaller than the others. Oh, it's got some weight though. This one's, this one's just bigger. Oh, all right. Well, I guess that one's, that one's, that one's a little different from the others, but you know what? I kind of like it more. I didn't get a sticker for this one. Oh boy. All right, well, oh, I got two here. Look at that. All right. So I think I'm going to sort them by size, okay? Well, this one's definitely the biggest. All right, just look at it. Look at it compared to the others. It's like a, it's a gargantuan. It's a gargantuan apple. Oh, this one's nice. I like the little ones because they got a good amount of weight to them. They feel like a real fake apple. You know what I'm saying? Well, looks like a seven-way tie. I just can't, I can't pick the best one because they're all the best ones, you know? They're all, they're all equal in my heart and in my eyes. And I'm glad that Adam is enjoying them. Um so much all right now thanks camp arrow hand oh wait no camp arrow head hey camp arrowhead welcome to week five of the arrowhead variety show i hope you guys are all doing swell and i can't wait to do some science with you today so this nice weather has gotten me so so hungry for some ice cream and since I have all these wonderful ingredients, and since some ice cream stores are closed right now, I had the great idea to make some ice cream myself at home. And I thought it would be so fun if you guys all joined me in doing that. So, the ingredients I need are some milk, 
some cream, some sugar, um, vanilla, and salt. So, what we do, oh, and we also need a small Ziploc bag and a large Ziploc bag. And how could I ever forget the eyes? Which is what is our main ingredient here. So, first, what I'm going to do is put the ice in the bag. All right, now that I have my ice in the big Ziploc bag, I'm going to put my other ingredients into the small Ziploc bag. So, we need one fourth cup of milk, two thirds cup of heavy cream, two tablespoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, so now that I have all these ingredients in the small bag, we're going to seal it up. And I also have some tape to seal it up even more for good measure. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is add some salt into our ice. And then I am going to put the small bag inside of the big bag and seal it up again. And our final step is to shake it up. bag has been shaken so now I'm gonna open it up I put it actually in another bag too because it was getting a little leaky so let's see nice. okay. so our tape kind of fell off that's fine that's fine and here's our final project it feels like ice cream definitely so let's see if it tastes like ice cream too Looks like ice cream. 10 out of 10. I highly recommend. I feel like I just went to Cabot's or something. So I would definitely recommend doing this at home if you can. It was such a great treat, especially on a fun April afternoon. And I'll see you guys next week. Hello and good evening. From location, my name is Newscaster One, and here are tonight's top stories. In tonight's top segment, April 2020. Whoa, what exactly is happening this month? Like, what? We look into the lives of Andrew and Bandrew Lydon, two identical brothers whose life has been turned a little upside down. Bandrew Lydon here, day one of vacation. And I don't know what that guy up there is singing. Hey, hey, baby. Ooh. Ah. I want to know. Oh, 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 could you be my girl? I don't know if it's an original. I don't know if it's a cover. But that guy is making it work. And I am in love with that song. I just want that song on repeat. Oh, thank you, waiter. And by the way, the only thing they serve on this resort is jerk chicken. And it's delicious. You wanna give me deliciously flavored chicken that goes straight to my bicep? Thank you. Day one, stuck on vacation. Say it's not going too bad. What's up, everybody? Andrew Lydon checking in from home. Got to sleep in today on April 1st for the first time in a while. Woke up at noon. What a treat. 
what's on the menu for breakfast? Breaking the fast? Cereal! 3 p.m. Guess I better do something. Hopping in the shower, gonna put on a podcast. Screw zub, zip zub zap. Now, son, what did you do today? I did absolutely nothing today. Nothing. April 10th, thank you for checking in. Uh, I think I can show you how I'm doing. Two, three, four. Ay, oh, what's this song? Hey, baby. Ooh. Ah, I want to know. Oh, could you be my... Is that the jerk chicken? Thank you. It's delicious. Hey, there you go. Hey. Hey. Hey, baby. Ooh. Ah. Mm -mm -mm. Going good. Andrew Lydon, April 10th. Just woke up at noon. All I have is cereal. So, I guess I'll have cereal. 3 p.m. I should probably do something. I'm gonna hop in the shower and put on a podcast. That's when I told the guy, skibs up zip. Now, son, what did you do today? Well, today I did absolutely nothing. Nothing. April 29th, Bandra Lydon checking in. The guy hasn't stopped singing the song, and all they fed me is jerk chicken. Yay, baby! Ooh, ah. I don't know, guys. <laughs> I think I need to change the schedule. Day 29 and I woke up at noon. What a treat. There's gotta be eggs somewhere. Pattern inside of the scoop. Now son, what did you do today? Today, father, I did absolutely nothing. Day 30 and they haven't stopped singing the song. Is this the jerk chick? What is this? Is this cereal? And what do I hear on my ears? A po- It can't be. A podcast. Day 30. It's Andrew, believe it or not. <sighs> Up at noon. Alright, let's see what there is to eat. Let's get what I imagine to be cereal. What is this? <laughs> is this jerk chicken? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, what is that song? Hey, hey, baby. Hey, baby. Ooh. Ah, I want to know. Oh, I love that. Oh, day 30. All I had to do was mix it up. Well, folks, there you have it. The moral of the story is, if you want to keep things fresh, you got to add a little bit of variety. Maybe like the Arrowhead Variety Show. Again, my name is Newscaster One, and I hope you have a great night.